back to the Babies First podcast brought to you by FAIR. I am Tracy Stump, and of course, with me is Ruchi Gupta. Hi. Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm tired, so I'm glad we're talking about sleep. Are, are, you, we- are you exhausted? What's going on? You look very vibrant. Yeah, Zoom makeup. Ollie's home. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you so sleepy? You have a baby that you're hiding from us? Oh, man, Tracy, see, I should not be complaining to you of all people because you're probably like, oh, please do not, do not, do not speak. No, I, you're, uh, you're a medical professional. You're probably like saving lives. No, I was not. I was sitting at an airport. So uh, yeah, so I, I, I was sitting at an airport. There were thunderstorms in Chicago and our flight was delayed seven hours and I got home at 4 a.m. And I, my kids, as I told you, are in high school and college. So I am not used to not getting a good night's sleep. So I'm it working sucks. on And then I had to take my daughter to tennis at 7 a.m. So yeah, so I've got working off about two and a half hours. Is that what you do every night, Tracy? How's your night? No, sleep? are you kidding me? That kid is that, I mean, she's having, she's been having a rough couple of nights, but I, I, I went for it and I did the whole sleep training thing like right off the bat. I probably did it too early because I will tell you sleep is so important to me. Absolutely. It's so important to me. It's, it's more important than um, human connection. Like I would rather be asleep by nine up at six than ever hug another human again. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Truly, and 2020 has, 2020 has proved that theory correct for me. That's pretty incredible. Wow, are you hugging humans again? Or uh... I mean, COVID's back, Rooch. I know. What, what is going on? Are you seeing a lot of cases in like the pediatric department? Yeah, not okay. Too. So it's good. Kids are still doing well. And, yeah. uh, and you know, now that we can vaccinate over 12, it's great. We just got to get these younger ones. Are people after. vaccinating though? Like that's the big question. I heard it went up a lot after this Delta. Sorry, that that beeping is, you know, the fire alarms. Do you have any of those where like it starts beeping on you when the battery is low? That's really good for sleep too. Really good. Yeah. So many good sleep hygienes that we're talking about. (laughs) Oh man. I want to like tuck you in and kiss your forehead (laughs) and let you know it's going to be okay. Are you, what's your, what's your game plan for the day? Are you going to just free base coffee and keep going or are you gonna yep. go to bed power yep. through power through today yeah but I love I loved opening up my schedule and seeing one of my first things in the morning was talking about sleep it's so fun <laughs> that's a little ironic but very cool so yeah, yeah I'm I'm really excited about this episode we have um she's a postpartum doula who is also a sleep consultant and I really want to like focus in on the sleep stuff today just because uh, like we're talking about it's it's detrimental if you don't have it in your life. And I think it's one of the hardest things about having a baby is the lack of sleep. And I think that is the anxiety that keeps people from having more children is the sleep. I know like right now I'm kind of at that, like, do I have another baby moment in my life? And the one thing, not the one thing, but like on the top of the list is like, oh my, like, do we want to start all over with not sleeping for a year? So I think it's really important to like dial that in and figure that out. And obviously sleep is so important throughout adulthood as well. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I'm so excited about it because I do think that's one of the hardest things for parents yeah. when, they're, when they have little babies and how do you, how do you truly figure it out? And right when you think you figured it out, you know, your baby start, yeah, it changes. They start teething or something changes and then they're, yeah. they're growing and they have different spurts and sleep is, is so difficult and challenging for for parents of, of babies I still remember it with mine um it was it was very hard so yeah I am so excited yeah. for our speaker today too yeah so let's bring her on uh you guys this is Davis Erler hello yay well yeah. Davis I was originally introduced to you from the World Wide web on Instagram I I think I'm such a fan. I love your Instagram lives. I love your like little hot tips and tricks, your little takeaways. You're at the three day sleep solution. I think it's, I love your packaging too. Like the three day sleep solution just feels so bite-sized and manageable. And I just, I just love it. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. Well, I created the three day sleep solution almost 20 years ago and it's, I Still regret not trademarking infant child sleep consultant, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Um, (laughs) um, But anyway, 
way. I have just been somebody who has always been very fascinated with humans, how we develop and so forth. But, you know, sleep is just one of those things that we think, well, you're good at it, blah, blah, blah. But it was my third daughter that really, 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 really set this in motion. Although I, I really always wanted to focus on the first three years of life through my education, but she didn't sleep. And it turned out it was me that caused all the problems. <laughs> Yeah, that's wait, wait, acceptance wait. is the first key. Oh, come on, Tracy. It's that guilt <laughs> about no guilt. No, David. Yeah. So We're big on no mom guilt. No, it's <sighs> okay. Let me okay, let me explain. Okay. I don't feel guilty about it, and nobody should feel guilty. It comes from a lack of education around sleep. That's what it comes to. Because I was causing it, and it's not guilt. So here is the fact: since I was the one causing it. I didn't get a defective baby. I had to figure out what I was doing so I could teach her a new way. So no, that, that's not the road we're gonna take guilt because there should never be guilt. Um, but it is about education. Like we are all very much designed to keep a child alive, but, but how we do it really, we have to reach out for help sometimes. So once I found out that first of all, I was putting her to bed way too late and I was actually responding which very ineffectively, basically, I was actually teaching her her brain because this is all about the brain. And that's what I harp on all day, all night, as Tracy knows in my in my doses of Davis and my lives and everything. Because this is about the brain. And so basically when I found out what I was doing, how I could correct it, and that was 21 years ago, by the way, 21 years ago, um, I did it and our lives changed within 24 hours. And um and so then about a year later, I became a postpartum doula. So I was working with newborns 20 to or probably 40 to 60 hours a week. And so instead of instantly responding, I started observing and I started observing and teaching parents. So I was a postpartum doula who was working my way out of a job um, and really teaching parents. And then interestingly enough, um, a mom in a play group just said to me, Davis, I can't afford you to be my, to be my postpartum doula, but will you just come over for a few hours and tell me what to do with, with Emma? And I said, yes. And I did. And all of those kids are graduating from high school this year. Oh, let me, let me ask you a question. What was too late? What was the time that was too late that you were putting your daughter down? Oh, I was putting her down just whenever she passed out, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So, forth, you know. so you weren't developing a routine. No, 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 no. And, no. and it was, yeah, it was because I didn't know my first two, like whatever, right. They were like, you know, they're, you know, I look back now and I say this all the time. If I could do the first three years of all three of my girls lives over, I would say, where do I sign up? Where do I sign up? Wow. But because this is where you build the base of the brain, everything, the first couple of years of life are so important. And everybody thinks that it's like expose them to this and this and this and this. No, it's about creating the right habits in the brain where the pineal gland is honored, where habits are honored. Everything is built those first couple of years. And it's like building the base or the foundation of a home. And it's very, it's just all through physiology. And, and would biology. you say sleep is the most important foundation? 100%. I can prove that over and over you, the introduction was just perfect because sleep is job one. Um, sleep feeds the brain, food feeds the body. And, um, and it's when, when we are tired, our bodies instantly go into stress. And so then that's where all hell breaks loose. So sleep is job one. And I always say to parents and anybody is this, if you went 24 hours without eating, you'd be okay. You'd be a little probably hangry, whatever. But if you went 24 hours without sleeping, you would be a danger to yourself and others. Ruchi, you're doing great. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but we all get there. And of course, traveling and everything, of course, that's real life. But yeah. yeah. Now, but Davis, like, what, what do you mean you did things wrong? Like, it was your fault. Like, what are, what are some of those key things that you feel like really you want to do over? For. Well, I, I, oh, so many things. Um, and again, it I, when I say it was my fault, well, I mean, like I said, no guilt because I didn't know until I knew. Now, if I knew and I still kept doing it wrong, I would take full responsibility for that. But um, right. so if overfeeding, I think that's the number one thing that we do all the time with our babies. We think all roads lead to their stomach and that is not true. So 
overfeeding. I'm um, just letting her sleep whenever she slept well, you know, because even, even my doctor would say, well, they'll, they'll finally fall asleep sometime. Cause you know, again, the medical profession, as you know, is not trained on sleep. It's trained on how to fix a broken or ill body. So that is something. So that was always her answer. Well, she'll sleep. You know, she would always ask about sleep, but it was like, well, you know, they'll, they'll finally fall asleep. And so that's kind of like, I was like, okay. And well, however, I feel like doctors have so yeah. much going on that it's oh, like, doctors, we have, yeah, yeah, we have to like take responsibility for our, our home life at some point, but I understand what you mean. Like it is, it's not always top priority because there's so many other things when you go into those pediatric it can't be. visits. It's, yeah. It cannot be top priority in the medical community because it's not a medical issue. And that's what, it, that's what I really try to impress upon parents is your doctor is educated on how to help you if your baby is ill or broken. They are not educated nor have the time to sit down and tell you how to do things at home. It's just not, it's not physically impossible and they're not even, it's not even part of the curriculum. Yeah, I have sleep is one of the, I'm a pediatrician, Dava, so I, 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 you know, I can jump in and tell you that's exactly right. I mean, there's so many things we deal with at that two month, four month, six month visit, yeah. but sleep always comes up. But the problem is, you know, there's so many ways of thinking and each parent is different and unique. And, you know, so you can, you, you can advise and all of us try and we can give resources, which we, we try to do. But in the end, like I was one of those parents, I was just such a softie. It was just so hard for me to sleep train personally. And so I felt guilty now, nah, guilty, ha, huh? yeah, as a pediatrician mom, you know, telling other parents, you know, but you have to when I, I was so bad at it personally. Well, you know, so. yeah, I have you guys, I have tons of pediatricians and doctors on my client list because again, you're not trained to do it. You, you, again, a lot of doctors, I mean, I could actually write a book on what doctors have told parents. That would be very entertaining for me. Oh, it was, it's, it's, it's mortifying and entertaining for me. <laughs> so, so but yes. what, at what day of life do you start with the foundation of sleep? Because my one. understanding is day, day one. one, day okay. one. So if we, so this is big. I, and again, sleep is just finally getting some, some, um, airtime, you know, we're finding that lack of sleep causes all sorts of issues. So I, I would prefer to start from day one, just like I did as a postpartum doula, where it's sleep education, just like food education, like we'll hire a lactation consultant right off the gate, right out, right out of the gate. But what about sleep? So if, because the fact is, is of course, those first weeks are going to be exhausting because the sleep is broken, but, but your baby needs so much sleep that it's insane that, you know, there's time to heal, but it is really important to start right out of the gate for sleep education because your baby does not and should not be sleep deprived for months until you can't take it anymore. That's, that's the flaw in this whole system. That's the flaw that we're going to sleep deprive our babies until we can't take it anymore. And it's incredibly important that our babies are getting the right amount of sleep from the very beginning. And that's crazy important. So my understanding is that babies don't develop a circadian or circadian rhythm until three months or That's like later true. day one, they know night and day. Nope. I didn't say that either. I didn't yeah. say that either. So circadian rhythms are our internal clock based on digestion, sleep, everything. It's the flow of serotonin, melatonin, everything that we need. And so the first four to six weeks, they're sitting in about a 24 hour window. Um, but it's six weeks where they, they shift and you'll start seeing those long stretches at night and so forth. Like babies could care less about the difference between day and night, those first six weeks, because they're really in a 24 hour pattern anyway. So when people are like, oh, they have their days and night mixed up. I'm like, that's not even possible because they can only be awake for about 45 minutes at a time anyway. <laughs> right. So you're not saying sleep train them day one. You're saying lay the foundation that sleep is important. Well, it's, it. Uh, lay the foundation that sleep happens. So if, if it were up to me, sleep training would not be a thing. So oftentimes this is how, this is how I really teach everybody. If we look at sleep the same way as food or our bodies, it makes a lot of sense. So you can either learn from the beginning how to take care of yourself and continue to take care of yourself, or you can wait till you gain 80 pounds. 
Right. It's in that is sleep training. That's sleep training. Like I'm uncomfortable enough that I now I got to figure out what to do. Whereas I would love a world where we know what is the right amount of sleep each day, the right amount of food each day, because that's all the baby's asking for. So yeah. is the cry it out method not your vibe? <laughs> yeah, well, first it? of all, first of all, this is a question I get a lot because I could ask a hundred people what the cry it out method is and a hundred people would have different answers. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me be clear. Like my, the way I slept training Lois was I would put her down drowsy. And then when she would cry, I, you know, I would set up the routine, bath, three books, a song, put her down. And then she'd scream. I go in five minutes, 10, 20, and then 20 minutes throughout the entire night for four months. That's not how I do it. That's not how uh, I do it at all, but that's okay. If that worked, that's fine. So my thing, my thing is you have to, you have to have your ducks in a row because so many people are like, Oh, you just throw them in the crib anytime and just let them cry it out. No, 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 no. Yeah. Circadian rhythms are where I start everything. You honor the age defined circadian rhythms. And then you go from there. Now, is there a crime that has to happen? Yes. And here is why the, the brain is going to feel frustration because it's literally building new connectors. The brain has to learn a new way of doing things. So it has to pull back those old connectors and build new ones. When we learn a new thing, any of us from birth till death, when we learn a new thing, we have a physical sensation of frustration. We have to, because a, a new brain connector has to be built. So you look at it like a seedling coming out of the ground. That's how you look at it. So that is all, if you have all your ducks in a row, that is what your baby's going to feel. So yes, crying has to happen. If anybody says crying doesn't have to happen, I'm like, that's as ridiculous as a personal trainer saying you, they can get you in shape without sweating. I love that. And we have to realize too, that a baby's cry means I need something. Our job is to know what they need. And sometimes it means back off and let me do it. And sleep is the one thing that every human will say, well, gosh, if somebody bugged me every five minutes, I'd have a hard time going to sleep. If you would just leave me alone for a little bit, I might be able to get to sleep. Yeah. Oh man. I remember, oh, I'm still guilty of it. Like going in when she was just like kind of drowsy and being like, are you breathing? Like just that anxiety and like, are you okay? Sure. Like yeah. you roll over. Can you breathe? Is it too hot? Is it too humid? Is it, there's so, there's so much anxiety that goes into it. It, it almost feels unfair that it is sleep is, it is, unfair. It it is, is part of the equation because you have so yeah. much going on. Your body's a nightmare. Like your brain is chemically imbalanced and you're not sleeping. And you have this thing that you never possibly could understand that you could love so much that you have to keep alive True. running on but Tracy, but Tracy, I want to tell everybody this it's designed perfectly because yeah. you are going through a healing process, a hormonal upheaval, everything. And your newborn baby is supposed to sleep about 20 hours a day. They are designed to eat, sleep, burp, poop, eat, sleep, burp, poop. That's it. So that is actually designed to give the mother time to heal as well. But we have such a chaotic society and we're doing everything so crazy that it just, it just causes utter chaos. And then nothing gets done. The baby gets overfed and underslept. The mother gets um, often postpartum depression, everything. Anxiety goes through the roof. So if parents were actually educated on what the baby needs right out of the gate. The mother has plenty of time to take care of herself and hand over anything she needs to other people. That's how it's designed by mother nature. Mm, we we just it. screw it up. Yeah. We ruined everything. <laughs> we do. We medicalize everything. I mean, Tracy and I talk about this all the time and I believe it as a pediatrician. I mean, we medicalize feeding people think too hard about all of it. And, and sleep yeah. is, is one of the big ones. And especially when the parents or the caregivers are sleep deprived themselves and, and we yeah. don't get lessons. My husband and I always talk about it because I'm a pediatrician, he's an OB and we had our first child and we're like, this is the hardest thing in the world. It's that different, it's we different. Need to learn about, nobody told us about and there needs to be a manual, but it has to be a, this is okay. Like there is no, you know, babies are programmed to survive. <laughs> oh, at 100%. Any, the scary thing is anybody can keep a baby alive. 
<laughs> which is bizarre because we put so much effort and so much energy into keeping them. I remember my pediatrician being like, she doesn't want to die. Like she doesn't want to, she yeah. wants to be here. And I was <laughs> like, strong oh, will my, to live. I, my I have mind to tell this all the time. They, they have a yeah. very strong will to live. Yes, yeah. they yeah. do. So Davis, yeah. what are your recommendations? Give us your top five. Top five recommendations? Yeah. Like Absolutely. What so, so here's, this is always a tough question for me because you got to give me an age, right? Cause there's, <laughs> well, let's do, let's do newborn top five yeah. for newborn and then top five. So I don't know, say 15 months kind of going through some stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can, but before we end this, can, um, I would love to talk about regressions and all that good stuff too. So well, I would love to talk about regressions too. I have a 15 month old daughter who has been a delightful sleeper for so long. I sleep trained her at four months and it was like, like the best thing I've ever done for myself yeah. and, and my marriage and my sanity and my skin. And I, um, she's been great for a long time. She's had like little hiccups along the way. Of and course, I, I, she's I, a human being. She's a human and she's a delightful human. I, do you believe in leaps? Either one of you, do you guys subscribe to that theory? Well, I'll, I'll jump in if that's okay. Um, okay. If that's okay. I don't want to interrupt anybody. Okay. Um, okay. So leaps happen. They have to happen. My big guideline is I think big things happen on the threes, right? So she's 15 months, five times three is 15. So big things happen on the threes, right? But now we could do a full conversation about this. In fact, Tracy, this week on my live, I'm going to talk 12 to 18 months. Tune in. Um, I'll be there. <laughs> 12 to 18 months is actually the most difficult six months of parenting from zero to five years old. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. You're, you're treating her like an infant and she's a toddler. So what does that mean? If you are, if you are responding to her at night at all, you are going to get more of it because you are catering to a demand, not a need. Well, here's my question. I think she's having nightmares. It's not possible. I can really? prove to you it's not nightmares. Our frontal lobes, again, everything I do is from the brain. You guys, if I were a lot more intelligent, I would have been a neuroscientist because I'm obsessed with the brain. Okay, but I'm not, so here I am and doing doing God's work as you said earlier. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so basically she can't have nightmares because she's never seen Freddy Krueger movies. Her frontal lobes have not fired yet. So that means she's waking up screaming bloody murder. You walk in, it's like, she's got this big smile on her face. Academy Award winner, winners right there, right there. So that is all. It's just a, it's just a behavior response, behavior response. Now, um, I, I'm going to give all parents a tip that's kind of far away from this because I want to go back and have time to do those five tips for newborns. But I want you guys to remember something is what we cater to the child believes. So like even as toddlers and young children, it's very counterintuitive and I understand it. But I want every parent to hear this, that when we get into a space where toddlers or young children, whatever, I'm scared, I'm scared. And it's like, okay, I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. What you're actually telling them is you're right. There's something to be afraid of. But if you say, I promise you, they're not, there's nothing to be afraid of. And you let them get through it. And the next morning you open that door, you just prove to them that they can trust you. So what's your suggestion now that it's been like three weeks of her waking up twice a night, screaming her face. I feel like her nose, like, I feel like there's something wrong because she's, that's not her Is disposition. Anything wrong? Is anything wrong? I mean, last night I sucked a bunch of boogers out of her nose. Cause she was like, she's 15 months. She can wipe her own nose on her pillow, whatever, or her blanket, whatever, or even a mattress. I don't care. She can. So you go in at the height of the crying. So Lois cries like somebody is literally pulling her fingernails out. So if you continue this, no, there's not one night that Lois is going to be like, you know what? Mama has been coming in twice a night for the last three weeks. <sighs> yeah. She's so sweet. So I'm going to lie down and go to sleep. You know so what? Your, you your suggestion, just Don't let her in. scream. Yes. It's yes. What if it's too humid in there and I need to turn the humidifier off? Well, you can keep doing that and she'll never sleep through the night again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful. Okay. So, so your suggestion is she's just a toddler. Let her, 
behavior response, behavior response. That is the toddler way. Whatever you respond to will continue. I want you to hear that. Whatever you respond to will continue. So is that why she goes to the outlets now and says, no, 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 no. And then puts her finger in it. Because I was like, no, no, no. When she touched the outlet, I feel like I'm screaming Probably. and I'm sorry. Probably, but I don't know. But let's, let's go, let's go back. So yes, but it is a tough time. But yeah. if you continue to go in, it's cool to go in. Like if something happens out of the blue, like that's weird. That's weird. I need to go check on her and you do, and you find out everything's okay. Most of the time, now I'm going to segue into those leaps. Most of the time it is a leap. It's a brain leap. It's a brain pop. It's big things happen on the threes. I always tell parents big things happen on the threes. So once you go in and you're like, okay, she's totally fine. Life is good. She's, this is probably what she's going through. You just give her a big kiss and hug and say, mama just wanted to check on you. Go ahead and go back to sleep. Then you walk out and then her brain knows I'm okay. I'm going to go back to sleep. Even if it has some resistance and leaps. So leaps happen. You guys leaps happen. They have to happen. Brain babies, brains have to learn new skills. We cause the regressions. So what you're doing, Tracy, is you're going to be like, yeah, she had a really bad sleep regression, 15 months sleep regression really bad really bad yeah. but all she was going through was a leap and you responded so you caused the regression so yes leaps happen parents cause the regressions so what does that mean just let the leap happen once you know the babe's okay let it happen because and i have a theory that the reason why so much activity happens in the crib is because it's the only place we ever leave them alone <laughs> Because think about it, when they're out of the crib, we're in their face, we've got toys, everybody's do, 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 do. and when they're in the crib, the brain goes, now we can practice, now we can focus on something. Hmm. That's really interesting. I really like that. Um, I like, I love, Davis, love your very natural approach and, and how you go about this. In fact, I wanted to, to mention, I've got to get you involved, we're working with FAIR on a really large study um, to look at early introduction of foods, but for the control arm, we're actually looking at sleep. So we're very, very excited. My, my sister is actually a neurologist and a sleep doctor. I've never had this conversation with her, which is you know pretty sad, but I would love to get you involved because we want to ask, we get to follow these babies from zero to hopefully forever, but- And that's what I've done. Yes. Yeah. With, yep. Yep. Yeah. And then so put your questions in or, or help me figure out like, what we need, because, you know, I'm, I'm a researcher and I think just getting that data, like really, really good data, because you know it, you've worked with so many families, but like, how can we get, we have a thousand infants in this, right? So how can we get that data from the parents and the babies and, you know, get it published so that people can follow what you're saying in a very, I guess, more than more, more data driven way. You know, like this is what happens and this is what we're seeing. And here, here's where, you know, the mistakes happen. And also my big question to you, Davis, is babies are all different too, right? So how do you, do you do a, like a one size fits all or are there some things that you think really are important for all babies? And then here's where there's three types of babies, you know, the real yeah, colicky yeah, ones, yeah. the they're really yeah. Oh boy. Okay, so I just want to say like this conversation could literally go on for eight hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> you actually said a lot there. And one of the things that I do is I do I rise above the noise and I get everybody back to basics. Now, here is here is really important. So since everything I do is driven from age defined circadian rhythms. The younger a person is, the tighter their circadian rhythms are. So yes, I do everything in a range, but it's such a short range. So for instance, um, a, a four-month-old, uh, every four-month-old needs anywhere between 11 and 13 hours of sleep a night, with 12 being the most common. So it, it, and 11 is even low for a four-month-old. So it doesn't range from, oh yeah, my four month old does great on eight hours. Well, that's just, and then the other one needs 13 hours. It's not how it goes. It's a very, the, the younger a uh, human being is the tighter the circadian rhythms are. I assume it's because they're nonverbal. So that's just, that it makes, babies are supposed to be the most simple things in the world, this most simple. Now there is a difference between temperament, so to speak, whereas some babies will smile through the misery and some babies will be like, I've been awake for two minutes too long. I'm about to lose it. 
So there are different temperaments, but it's our job as parents to be educated on their age to find circadian rhythms. And then we can know our babies from there. Mm -hmm. So that that's really the difference in babies. Now, um, as far as tracking, so I've actually been keeping a spreadsheet that before it was just really designed to keep everybody on track. Um, and now one of my clients about five, six years ago said to me, Davis, how long have you been keeping these things? And at that point I was like, I don't know, 13, 14 years. And she said to me, you know, you've been collecting medical data this whole time. So I have been collecting them through the years. So I will continue to collect them if you ever want to see them. So there's that. So interesting. Cause I'm like, I just look at this and I'm like, ah, <laughs> cause I'm not a researcher. So, but, yeah, um, we need but a yeah, I have, I have been tracking these babies and children for years and years. And it's, and like I said, that silly spreadsheet was just so when I was commuting with parents, they were like, I don't know, let me think. I think, I think they went to sleep at 10 02. Hold on, honey, do you remember what time? I'm like, stop. So I created this spreadsheet and it actually records what time we put the baby down, what time the baby went to sleep, how long the baby slept and how long they were awake. So that, that is really what has, has educated me like crazy as well. So, so yes, I would love to be part of that. Nothing would make me happier than to, to continue this education for more arrested people and babies and children. So five tips. Do we have time for the five tips? Please. Okay. Okay. Newborn babies. Now, just for the sake of um, those first two weeks, I'm going to say, all right, for the first two weeks, mamas are trying to get their milk in and all that good stuff. So just for the sake of, of, um, but I, you know, I can also say from birth, but the five tips are, this is one, one, um, your back sleeping baby needs to be swaddled effectively. Sleep environment is everything because if your baby's morrow sets off, there's no stopping it. There's no stopping it. So if the legs are moving, so they're like turtles on their back, it's not going to stop. So mm. swaddling is, you have to do it so correctly. In fact, I would say 99% of the people who reach out to me zero to six weeks, it's all about the swaddle. It's all about the swaddle because that baby is jolting and then then pulling their hands out and it just can't happen. It, the, the swaddle has to be correct. Also, um, the next tip is that your baby, your baby can only be awake for about 30 to 45 minutes, those first four to six weeks. And that's just enough time to eat, burp, change a diaper, wrap back up and get back down. Okay. The other thing that is, that, that is magic. And I wish every parent was taught, was taught this is this, that that first 12 weeks of life, that first 12 weeks, if you hold a baby out forward face to face, like cooing and talking to them, they will not make direct eye contact with you for five seconds. Like they start looking at your chin, your nose, even here, sometimes you'll be like this and um, trying to follow. I guarantee you they're tired and you can look at the clock and I guarantee you they are at their, their limit. So lack of eye contact, those first 12 weeks face to face is their number one tired sign. Not cradle outward magic. If every parent knew that, oh my gosh. So wow. that's another tip. The other tip is that we really need to not assume that babies are always hungry. So I get it breastfeeding moms, and this is always a tough one, but here's my biggest tip I ask parents. So I'm a big believer in the three to four hour eating schedule. And, but it's your job to make sure that they get enough, but we get in this habit of, of um, topping babies off, topping babies off, topping babies off. Then we put them on their back. We start causing digestive um, um, discomfort. So I'm a big believer in that because I've also been trained in lactation and it takes the mother's body three to four hours to build a meal. And if we're just popping them to the breast, then we're just giving them a little formula, topping them off, topping them off. So I also think an eating schedule is so important. Um, the baby's body does not want to be in full belly digestive mode all the time. So I, that's another tip to do. So I think, is that the fourth one? I think that's fourth. Yes. Oh, fifth. Oh, oh, okay. Is that it? So, so oh, the yeah. other thing, one, one more, one more. Yeah. Oh, I've got one more. I've got one more. Um, and the other one is that babies should be sleeping. Uh, oh, this is huge. So zero to six weeks too. People often say, oh, babies can sleep anywhere. 
what we need to remember is zero to six weeks, your baby does not even have a filter on its brain. So it's absorbing all of that, all of that. And I learned this from my pediatrician 27 years ago, love this, but she explained to me that colic actually isn't a belly issue at all. It's actually a brain issue because um, the baby's brain is losing its mind because it's overtired and overstimulated. And I've always thought about that. And I've actually been able to cure 100% of babies from colic because when they get enough sleep, they don't go through that discomfort. It's inertia. And so that is, and so what do we do when a baby's losing its mind? We're bouncing, we're shaking, we're doing this, we're here, you take it, you take it, you take it. If a baby could talk, they'd say, you're, you're driving me crazy. And, it, and yes, is it a form of pain? Absolutely. So mm. that's my five tips right there is honor baby sleep. Get all those, get all those ducks in a row and magic happens. And this makes me want to have another baby just so I can try all these. Things. I know, I know. I, I, I laugh sometimes. <laughs> like sometimes I think I'm, yeah. Cause people are like, yeah, we had three kids because of you. And I'm like, well, good. It keeps me in business. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This has been incredible awesome this yeah. has been incredible yeah Ruji, what it. tips are you going to take away today to get a better night's sleep <laughs> oh man i can sleep really really well i just need yeah. time time is all but um but no davis i mean these are really great tips even for pediatricians to know like just you know that eye contact thing i had never heard of like you said mm -hmm. and so that's one i could start using right away yes and and please, I mean, let us know where people can find your information and your resources, because I think this is so, so helpful um, for families. I mean, it is, it is the hardest thing. I'm feeling like you now. I'm like, oh man, I did everything wrong with my two kids. Mm -hmm. And I, not guilty, but you know, one of my favorite quotes is Maya Angelou, where she says, um, do the best you can until you know better. Yes, when you yes, know better, yes. Better. Yes. And so that's yes. kind of what we're preaching. It's not like, I didn't know, you know, people don't know things are evolving, but I think going back to demedicalizing and let, letting babies be and knowing yeah. they're okay is, is a really, really big part of it. I mean, for me, it was like, oh, you know, then are they going to not feel loved? And, you know, some of that data came out, which I would just want to ask you about Davis, because in the first couple months, we say, always go get them and always pick them up, you know, at least for the mm -hmm. first two months, because they need well, that connection or that absolutely yeah. so I always ask I I always say where did that data come from right that's the big thing like where did that I I mean I would like to sit down and ask the researchers tons of questions because where does that data come from and um because again how do you know was that did we have all the ducks in a row did the babies sleep so am I saying ignore everybody no I didn't say that either but if are the totals have to be there and when the totals are there the baby naturally feels so loved if you think about it takes 30 to 45 minutes to feed a newborn that's a lot of connection so I know for this for sure because I have been tracking children for so long now is that when your when their totals are there meaning they, they've got enough independent sleep a day enough food a day their brains work so well. In fact, one of my quips is babies who, who eat well, just eat well, babies who sleep well, do everything well. You guys, they feel so connected to themselves and they mm. feel so connected to you. I love that. That's so beautiful. Never, it is. And yeah. that's where I think we're missing the boat. Yeah. I think that goes for all ages. <laughs> all ages, yeah. all ages. And, 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 this is the foundation because then they grow on this, right? They right. grow on that connection and it's gorgeous and beautiful. And, yeah. and that's, I think that's where we miss the boat that we think connection is just catering, 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 catering. And it causes that brain to need it more and more and more and more. And then everybody's like, Oh, I don't know what to do. And then next, you know, there's anger, there's sleep deprivation. The, the baby's constantly like, often overfed and underslept. I'm a big believer that the reason why we live in such an overfed and underslept world is these first couple of years of life. And you have to remember we're raising people to go out into the world and be the oh. best versions of themselves. We're not raising little, little things raising, to stay with us. Yep. We're not raising that, babies. I, we're I, raising I, good human beings. I've said that for years as a mother now whose children are 27, 25, and 21. Wow. I've said really as parents, we have two jobs and one is to show them how the world works and to keep them safe. 
And that's yeah. really it. That's really, yeah. that's really it. And, um, but yes, cause we are, if I, if I can really, and I explain it this way, is it simple as like, we're building the foundation these first few years, and then they get to spend their life decorating the house. Yeah. But if with the foundation has a bunch of cracks in it, it's like, you know, we would love to take care of the kitchen, but we've got a leak somewhere. And that's how so many of us live our lives. Like, yeah. why am I always wanting to eat when I'm hungry or when I'm tired? It's because you were fed to sleep. Yeah. So oh, that's shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Davis, we could talk to you truly all day yeah, about hours, this hours. thank you thank you yeah. so 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 much for coming on and doing this everybody go follow davis at the three day sleep solution truly one of the, my favorite instagram accounts to follow and i follow a lot of accounts thank and you. i just i i just love you so 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 much and if you guys have any more questions uh go on over to babiesfirst.org or you guys can follow us on instagram or facebook at babies first by fair Leave us your questions, Davis. I feel like we should do like part two of, yeah. of all of this I really would love soon to. with like a bunch of fan questions because this was just, this was monumental in my life. This was a big day for me. This was a, thank you, <laughs> truly. Thank you so much for doing this. Well, I thank I you guys. guys. Over Davis now. I wish I could do it all over too. I but know. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. kids are 19 and 15. So I'm with you in that boat of, oh my gosh, you're teaching me so much. So Absolutely. We should, Tracy, we should do like now we did newborns, you know, I think there's like a six month mark that's challenging yeah. for teething and then to the, you know, that toddler all the way to teenager and then like 30 oh, yeah. something, for you know, sure, you guys. <laughs> my, it's, it's, it's a lot. So yes, thank you for having me. My joy in life is so much about helping parents because I just, the thought of parents feeling like, oh my gosh, when are they going to wake up so we can start our day with babies makes me so happy. Uh, so wait, Ruchi, I feel like you have a book coming out now. I do. I do. It kind of goes along with all of this. We got to get rid of fear, right? So here you go. Food without fear. It's coming out August 24th. Kind of goes through, you know, eating and all the different conditions now that that come about because of food, including food allergies, but other intolerances, et cetera, and kind of helping you figure out what you have and what, how to manage it best and how to treat it best. And so please, please come take a look. Our website is foodwithoutfearbook.com. And Tracy, I would love, love to talk to you more about it. Yeah, but let's, let's look at that beauty again. Wow, uh, that's thick. Look at that. You wrote all that? It is thick. Oh my goodness. It's really long. There is an audio version where I recorded it for like eight days in a studio. It was, it was long. Are you narrating it? I am. Oh my God. I, I love an audio book so much. Oh, Tracy, please. Because someone's got to listen to that thing. I spent a lot I'm, of time recording that. <laughs> I'm so excited. Tell us again when it comes out. August 24th. Oh, that's so soon. Let's get it. Let's get a countdown going. Yeah. And it's on, it's on the website. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Nobles. It's on everything. All the different, you know, book publishers out there that are still alive. So food without fear. Let's yeah. do it. Yay. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.